how to measure steel for your steel project. So this will be a quick informational video, I hope for you guys, the viewers, on how to measure for your steel to get a kind of an accurate measurement uh, for your material list and quote, so you know. We're gonna start by measuring the width times the height, find out what accessories we need as far as there's gonna be some wall flashing, some transition, some gable end, uh, ridge cap, so pretty basic stuff. There's gonna be no valleys on this one. But uh, yeah, let's jump up there and get at this. I'll show you how to measure it. If we do shoot a video, if I have time to be here with the guys to actually follow along while installing it, I'll plug a card up here. If you wanna watch that, once we get it, I'll put the card in in this video. As well as the steel supplier that's doing this job, I'll throw a card up here when I took a tour of their factory about a year ago, uh, maybe a little longer, I don't know. It was about a 17 minute video, pretty cool operation. Waggler Metal Sales here in central Indiana near Kokomo. Check them out, they're pretty cool. Uh, just find the Kokomo Airport, they're just a tick northeast of there anyway yeah so let's get at it and i apologize you're gonna have to just bear with me holding this in my hand because it's windy and the gopro heard nothing but wind so we're gonna do this i hope hope you can hear me right now i mean it's pretty breezy yeah so let's get at it no you're gonna need to know if you're doing exposed fastener or standing seam hidden fastener so I'll show you here in a minute with the difference between those, but this one is going with exposed fastener because it's closer profile to what he has up there on the upper part of the original barn. And let me just take you up here real quick. I've got a sample of standing seam, I'll show you that. So exposed fastener, it's exactly that, it's exposed fasteners. You can see a hook here, there's where two panels lap, so there's one, two, three, four, five rib, so it's a five rib exposed fastener the profile is different you were not able to find this any longer we're still going to go with the five rib exposed fastener because they all should wrap up the same distance let me see if i can hold this here real quick see if i can't pull this out Come on, it's not going to hook so if we put that right there in that rib 36 inches is right in this so it's the same profile as what we're going to buy it's just different uh I'm sorry, not same profile. Same width panels, but a slightly different profile. So that's what we're gonna go with so it matches close with a close color to what's up there. Standing seam. I just happen to have this in the truck. So a standing seam is a hidden fastener. You're gonna get your panels up there and they fasten with panhead screws through these slots going down your panels if it was going up the roof like that. And your second set, your, your second panel, this is going to click over this right here and you just sit, line it up over it and just drive a little mallet on it And it locks down on there. So it's it's fastened really good It's a nice product. This is also a crinkle finish if you're wondering why it looks like that. It's expensive It's gonna cost a lot more than exposed fastener And there's a little more craftsmanship and installation time that takes to put that in the wind We're gonna start by our apron measuring our width to know for how many sticks apron we need as well as panels so You're gonna take your total feet and divide it by three because it's three feet per panel when you're doing uh, exposed fastener um, Gable transition anything else I'll kind of go in order when it comes to measuring it I'm gonna measure the both gables and in the middle just because I want to find out if it's not plumb or not if it's not plumb I'll kind of take that into account we're also gonna hang down at least one inch over our apron and uh, we don't want to have to cut unnecessary cuts so we're gonna measure it to fit right in there without cuts that's the plan okay we're gonna start um, probably on this bottom edge well, let's take our width first it's a little breezy out right now so I'm just going to draw a quick little sketch right here. We're going to do a little garage. And we got a little small section back here. I never said I was a good drawler. Start right here. And then come out. Pretty close to that. 48 feet. 48 feet. So 
you're going to take three divided by or 48 divided by three. That'll tell you how many panels you need. Uh, you're going to need about four, st uh, five sticks of apron, assuming they're 10 foot. It's going to be a bit of a pain doing this by myself because of the wind. But since the ladder's here, we're just going to try it real quick. I do need to get here to measure my transition anyway. So what we're going to do now is hook on down at the bottom and come up or we'll do our transition then I'll come up. The wind's blowing this way. It might help me blow my tape measure up here. But essentially we want to make sure our tape measure is measuring from right in here at this rib, nothing back. Because you you know, you know, you want to make sure they're under there but not smashing it. You want to make sure you're at the very bottom where your apron corner is going to be and you're going to add one inch. Uh, or if you hang it down one inch, you're gonna have a one inch gap, whichever. You want it to hang down past your apron, but when it's hung down, you don't want it to be smashing this because it's just unnecessary cutting you're gonna need. As far as the transition, we're gonna want the transition to come down on our roof panel. So keep in mind, you're gonna have a one inch rib right here, okay? So you have to deduct one inch from your measurement. You're also gonna make sure your transition can go under here. Measure from here down and minus an inch. That's your rise you're gonna need. You're gonna want probably a six inch down on your metal you'll have enclosures under there and then from this point where that vertical rise is up we're going to have to pop these nails out we're going to measure up a good eight inches or so up here so we'll pop all these out this is again when the panels are down you're ready to put all your flashing and stuff in it will look like a z almost it'll go under this panel down one inch or whatever that measurement will be and then on the top of those panels so any rain snow anything will run off of this panel and onto your next panel you won't get any leaking happening right here so let's measure that all right so looking at this coming off the panel the the wood purling is two and a half inches. We don't want it to be that tight. We're just gonna go with two, okay? Then you also gotta keep in mind you got one inch for your rib height. So if you're at two, you're gonna take an inch off your rib. It's gonna be a one inch drop. That should be pretty sufficient because your rib is gonna fit right in here. So transition's gonna look like that. We're gonna have a one inch here probably eight there six here so that's going to be looking didn't have my mic up it's going to look like a side profile like that where it's going to tuck under that come out on your other panel so our apron is going to go up here and it's going to hang down over the fascia board there's a slight different you know difference in distance here so you're going to have to kind of float it so you're 90 degree or actually it's not going to be a 90 but you're bend down you're not going to pull it tight you're going to want it to be here so technically right there is where you want your your measurement to start one inch past that so as looking down the tape you want to start one you know measure one inch past this point because you want a one inch lip hanging off One forty-six. One hundred forty-six inches on this end. Try to get one in the middle, one at the end. This breeze is definitely not making it easy. We're not hooking on here because if you look down there, it has to go up further. Yeah, looking down on that, we just got to add one inch to be out. So if we just hook this and pull tight, we're going to add one inch to get us to there. We're going to add one inch to get us the inch over. Should be right around the 146 mark. One forty-three, four five. So that should be two inches hanging down. One 
45. As you can see, it's hanging down one inch and it's about an inch off of the fascia board there. 145. So if we go 146, it's actually gonna be hanging over on this end. You could, you might need to cut these, but the other thing is, is if we measured 146 down there, it's gonna be okay to float it down a little bit or for it to be a little short. You don't want it to be 146 hitting and too far down. So we're just gonna make it 145 across. We're gonna check one in the middle too. You want your bottom to be straight, look nice and locked together, smooth, no jagged edges. If you have to cut, you're gonna cut the top where it's hidden. 145. Check the middle. We're gonna make that a five now. Let's go ahead and get our width here on this done. Thirty six, call it thirty seven. Let's get our panels here. Just hook one end and the other, maybe one in the middle. Again, we're going to add one inch, 165, 165 to the center. So if you add an inch, it's just going to drop down to the 164 mark. So that's fine. 165 inch. Let's check this side. One sixty five top dead center. By the time you put your apron on and hang it down, you're good. Now, a good time to note if you're going to do ridge vent, once this is gone, you want to make sure your panels are counted just a little bit shorter. That way, you can cut the ridge open and put a ventable ridge system on it. This guy does not want the ridge vent. So we're not gonna need it. It's not heated. There's no need to necessarily vent this. He's got all kinds of openings on it. So don't assume that's gonna be square all the way. You can set yourself up for failure. One sixty five again, that's good. I'm pretty confident the middle will be okay. You can always trim your panel. You can't make it grow. 3 panels so we'll get that so 3 foot 6 foot that's 2 panel and then 9 foot would be your third panel so you're going to need 3 panels here we're going to mark out at 8 I think the easiest way to do this in the wind is going to be hook here Looking down, 168 is going to be where your apron is. We're going to go 169. 168 and 168. 168 is probably good because I don't want it to the very, eh, yeah, let's go longer. You want to make sure you have something to screw it to. So we're going to need to bring that down. Sixty-nine. 
So I got any panels. Pardon me while my phone rings. All right, sorry, I had to cut because I had a phone call. So now that we've got our, our width, we've got our width, we've got our width, we know how to figure for our apron, ridge cap, and panels. Um, accessories, typically apron, D-drip, whichever you use, ridge cap, they're gonna typically be 10 foot. Uh, so you know how many of those you need by taking your feet divided by 10. Your panels are gonna be take your feet divided by three. So we can figure all that. We need to figure our apron, which is, I'm sorry, our uh, wall flashing up to this wall. It's simple because we know our wall right here is 145 coming up. So we're gonna need that same distance and wall flashing. Uh, gables, you're gonna have your measurements here for these. So you're just gonna divide your inch uh, by 12 for your feet or just tell your supplier that's what you need. Makes a little bit longer, you can cut them down. Uh, ridge cap, you know this one. Transition, we need to measure from here to here so we know how much transition we're gonna need. Oh, excuse me. So uh, yeah, we need to add wall flashing for this, wall flashing for this. So three walls with wall flashing. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, and five with gable. So that's about all you need. Make sure you give your widths and your heights to your supplier. They'll get you your quote for what you need. I should have had it broke down as far as uh, cap, ridge, rake, whatever accessories you're gonna need. Try to draw that out ahead of time so you don't forget something. Then you can just make it like a checklist style and go through it. 169, 165, 65, yeah. Wait, 145, 145, 165s. Okay. As far as the wall transition, we're just gonna measure down this wall. It's gonna be just a couple inches past that, which is fine, no big deal. Thirty right here. Feet. We'll call it 41. Well, yeah, because you're going to need to overlap each one of those pieces slightly too out of the prevailing winds. So that's going to be 42. That's really all you need is your, your uh, sketch measurements here. All right, if you like what I showed you, all right, blah, 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 all right. So, yeah, certain keywords I say starting out sentences, geez. Retake. If you like what you saw here in this video, think about what you're missing if you're not subscribed. So consider subscribing, ring the bell off to the side so you're notified when I throw them out there. And one of these also, please. Thank you. Be safe until next time. See you then.